Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at the homework for Unit 6, Lesson 2 on Rational Exponents. Remember to pause the video and rewind it as necessary. Let's take a look at Part 1. Rewrite the following as equivalent roots and then evaluate as many as possible without your calculator. Well, we're going to do them all without a calculator, or at least try our best. A, anything that's a half root, uh, that, that's a uh, <clears throat> raised to the one half power is a square root. Square root of 36, of course, would be 6. To the one third power is a cube root, so the cube root of 27. We're looking for a number that multiplied times itself three times gives us 27. That would be 3. And we could look at it again as 3 times 3 times 3. And this cube root only makes one of these three pop out. This would be the fifth root of 32. So what number times itself five times gives you 32? That would be two also. And D, 100 to the negative one-half power should be rewritten as 100 to the positive one-half power first, which is the square root of 100, 1 over the square root of 100, which is one-tenth. Letter E, 625 to the 1 fourth power, that is the fourth root of 625. And well, 625 can be broken down into 25 times 25, but that can be broken down into five times five times five times five. So what number times itself four times gives you 625? Well, that would be five. Forty-nine to the one half power is the square root of forty-nine, which is seven. Eighty-one to the negative one fourth power should be written as a positive exponent first. So one over eighty-one to the positive one fourth power is how we begin to rewrite it. Then we should see that this is the fourth root of eighty-one. So I'm looking to break up 81 four times. What number times itself four times gives you 81? Will that be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3? Therefore, uh, the cube root or the fourth root, I don't know why I wrote cube root there, the fourth root of 81 or the fourth root of 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 would be, of course, 3. So 1 over 3 is our result. And lastly, 343 to the one-third power would be the cube root of 343. Now, you have to be thinking to yourself, what times itself three times is going to give me 343? Well, it's not two. Two times two. Two times two times two would be eight. So it's not two. It's not three. Three times three times three would be 27. No, it's not that. Uh, it's not 4. 4 times 4 times 4 would be 64. But you can see we're getting higher and higher, right? So let's jump up to a higher number like 7. Well, 7 times 7 times 7 indeed turns out to be 343. So therefore, the cube root of 343 would be 7. Part 2. Evaluate each of the following, considering the root and power indicated by the exponent to as many without a calculator. Remember, guys, the top number is the power. The bottom number is the root. And I'm going to show you how to do the first one two different ways. And then I'm going to suggest that perhaps doing it one particular way might be a little bit more helpful when you get into really large fractional exponents. Let me take a look. 
One way we could do this is we could write this as the cube root of 8 to the second power. Well, that's the same thing as the cube root of 64. 64 is 8 to the second power, which is the cube root of 4 times 4 times 4. I'm looking for a number that multiplies times itself 3 times to get 64. Therefore, the cube root of 64 would be 4. Now, that's not the only way we could have done it. Some of you might find it a bit easier to do it this way. Break up 8 and 2 thirds into 8 and 1 third raised to the second power. Because remember, 1 third times 2 is 2 thirds. So if we do that, maybe the cube root of, of um, 8 is easier to evaluate than the cube root of, let's say, 64. Well, the cube root of 8 is, right here is 2, and 2 raised to the second power is 4. I'm going to suggest it's probably going to be easier when you get larger fractional exponents, like you see here, 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 and so on that perhaps maybe it might be easier to take the root, do the root inside the power. That might be a little easier only because uh, sometimes it's hard to take, the, or a little more challenging to take the uh, root of such a high number. So anyway, let's try it that way. So what I can do is I can break this into four to the one half power, because I see a, a half there, raised to the power of 3, because remember, 3 times 1 half is 3 halves. Well, that's the same thing as the square root of 4 raised to the 3 power. Notice all I'm doing is changing that. Well, square root of 4 is 2 raised to the 3rd power, which would be 8. Sixteen to the negative three fourths power should be rewritten as a positive exponent of one over sixteen to the positive three fourths power. Now I could rewrite this as one over sixteen to the one fourth power cubed. Because remember, three times one fourth is three fourths. All right, which would be the fourth root of sixteen raised to the fourth power. So I'm thinking to myself, what's a number that multiplies times itself four times to get 16? Well, that would be two. So the cube root, or the, the fourth root, excuse me, of 16 would be two. So one over two cubed, right? We're taking the cube root of four, this part right here, to get two. And uh, two times two times two, or two cubed would be eight. So one over eight would be the result. I could rewrite 81 to the 5 fourths power as 81 to the 1 fourth power raised to the fifth power, because 1 fourth times 5 would be 5 fourths. And I could rewrite this as the fourth root of 81 raised to the fifth power. Well, the fourth root of 81, I'm looking for a number that multiplies times itself four times to get 81. Well, the fourth root of 81 would be 3. And I'm going to take 3, and I'm going to raise it to the fifth power, which would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is uh, another times 9, and then times 3. So 81 times 3 would be 243. Oh, let's see, 4 to the negative 5 halves power should be rewritten as 1 over 4 to the positive 5 halves power. We can then go ahead and rewrite this as 4 to the 1 half power raised to the power of 5, because 1 half times 5 is 5 halves. It always is more helpful to put the, the, the root inside and the power outside. 
um, to do these large ones, the ones with large fractional exponents. That would be the same as 1 over the square root of 4 raised to the fifth power. Well, take the square root of 4, and you get 2 raised to the fifth power, which would be 1 over 32. This is one that we would definitely need to do something like that because that's going to be very challenging to take the 7. I mean, let, let's try this. Okay, so this would be the 128th, the 7th root of 128 raised to the 3rd power. Because that 3 times 1 7th is 3 7ths. So what number times itself 7 times is going to give you 128? In other words... This would be the seventh root of 128 cubed. So all I did was just change this into the seventh root. Well, what number times itself seven times gives you 128? Well, that number would be two. We're going to raise that to the third power, and we get eight. Letter G, 625. So the 3 fourths power would be 625 to the 1 fourth times 3. 3 times 1 fourth is 3 fourths. Which would be the fourth root of 625 raised to the third power. 625 again gets broken down into 25 times 25. Right? Or 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, and then we cube that. Well, that means the fourth root of 625 would be 5 raised to the third power would be 125. Two hundred and forty-three raised to the three-fifths power would be the fifth root Fifth root of uh, 243 raised to the third power. So I'd rewrite this as 243 to the one-fifth power raised to the third power. Three times one-fifth is three-fifths. So that's the fifth root of 243 raised to the third power. We just got done doing this one above the fifth root of 243 would be 3. So this would be 3 to the third power, which would be 27. Number 3. Given the function f of x is equal to 5 times the quantity x plus 4 raised to the 3 halves power, which of the following represents its y-intercept? Remember, ladies and gentlemen, y-intercept is the location on the graph where x equals 0. So we will plug 0 in for x. So let's go to the function. f of 0, we're evaluating x equals 0 be 5 times 0 plus 4 raised to the 3 halves power, which would be 5 times, now 0 plus 4 is just 4 raised to the 3 halves power, which is the same thing as 5 times 4 to the 1 half power cubed, because remember, 1 half times 3 is 3 halves which is 5 times the square root of 4 cubed. Take the square root of 4, and it would be 5 times 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8. 5 times 8 is 40. Number 4. Which of the following is equivalent to x to the negative one-half? 
Well, x to the negative 1 half is 1 over x to the positive 1 half. And if we write that as a root, that's 1 over the square root of x. Written without fraction or negative exponents, x to the negative 3 halves is equal to, well, first, it's 1 over x to the positive 3 halves, which is the same thing as the square root of x to the third power. But we don't need to write square root as a second root, just write it with the symbol like this. Which of the following is equivalent to 16 to the 3 halves power? Well, 16 to the 3 halves power could be rewritten as the square root of 16 cubed. So that's one of them. We're looking for one that's not equivalent, so that's out. Um, we could also rewrite it as um, the square root of 16 cubed. 16 cubed is 16 times 16 times 16, which is 4,096. Well, that would be this one here which is, again, we're looking for what's not equivalent, so that's out. Well, if we go 16 to the 1 half power cubed, remember 1 half times 3 is 3 halves, that's the same as the square root of 16 cubed, which is the same as 4 cubed, since square root of 16 is 4, and 4 cubed is 64. So you can see that that evaluates, but we want the one that's not, so that one's out. So the only one that's not would be number 2. Marlene claims that the square root of a cube root is a sixth root. Is she correct? Well, let's break this down and see. The square root itself can be written as something to the one-half power. What is that something? It's this root here, which is a to the one-third power. Remember, a cube root is one-third. And what is our power rule? When we're going a power to a power, we multiply the exponent. So a to the one-third times one-half is a to the one-sixth power, which is a sixth root. She is correct. In the last part here, we should know that the cube root of 8 is 2. To see how this is equivalent to 8 to the 1 3rd power equals 2, we can solve the equation 8 to the nth power equals 2. To do this, we would write the equation as 2 cubed to the n power equals 2 to the 1. So let's actually start with this, and let's show how this can be equivalent to this. Let's take a look. So 2, if 8n is equal to 2, then 2 to the third power to the nth power is equal to 2 to the 1. Uh, and this is really the same thing if we multiply those. 2 to the 3n is equal to 2 to the 1. And if the bases are the same, those exponents must be the same. Therefore, 3n must equal 1. I meant to divide by 3. And therefore, n is equal to 1 third, which is exactly right what it should be. Again, remember to pause or rewind the video as necessary. And thank you.